For nearly five decades, Voyager 2 has sailed through the cosmic darkness like a ghost ship of human curiosity, drifting farther from Earth than any machine we've ever built, whispering its final observations into the void. And for most of that time, its transmissions were predictable. Particles, plasma readings, cosmic ray fluctuations, exactly what scientists expected from a probe coasting through the interstellar sea. But everything changed when one transmission included something it was never programmed to capture. An image, not a visual artifact, not a static anomaly, an actual structured high-frequency signature translated into what analysts have begun calling a visual cipher. At first glance, it looked like a dense cloud of heat and noise, pointless, like watching static from an old analog TV. But after enhancement, layering, and time-filtered analysis, the form began to shift into something recognizable. It wasn't a star. It wasn't a planet. It wasn't even from within our solar system. And yet, it was looking at us. The deeper scientists dug, the more disturbing the image became, not because of what it showed, but because of what was missing around it. Light distortions that hinted at a gravitational influence, as if this object wasn't just observing, but bending space itself. And the signal that carried this image came with a spike in radiation, a brief shift in Voyager's orientation, and a drop in system stability, as if something out there reached back and touched it. The image extracted from the Voyager 2 transmission was unlike anything NASA had ever seen. It was layered, not a single frame, but multiple overlapping impressions of the same object at different moments, as though time itself had fractured during its capture. When experts analyzed the metadata, they were stunned to discover that the image didn't conform to linear time. Timestamps overlapped, pixel regions looped, and the resolution shifted in fractal patterns that hinted at higher dimensional data compression. This wasn't a photograph. It was a multidimensional event encoded into a two-dimensional signal. What appeared in the foreground resembled a monolithic shape, sharp and impossibly symmetrical, suspended in a void absent of stars. It wasn't drifting. It wasn't rotating. It was perfectly still, almost as if it had been waiting for the exact moment Voyager would pass near enough to witness it. And then, the probe's signal degraded, not gradually, suddenly, as if the act of observing it had been noticed. Simultaneously with the transmission of the image, Voyager 2's instruments detected an inexplicable increase in plasma density surrounding the spacecraft. At the edge of the heliopause, where the sun's influence ends and true interstellar space begins, plasma density should be nearly zero. Instead, readings showed a sudden wall of charged particles, ten times denser than anything previously measured. What disturbed scientists most wasn't just the density, it was the temperature. This plasma was hot, not star hot, artificially hot. The type of heat generated not by natural phenomena, but by containment, by control, by design. As if something had created a barrier, a membrane separating our solar system from what lies beyond, not to keep things out, but to keep us in. And in that moment, Voyager didn't just record plasma, it recorded a response, a ripple, a pulse of energy that surged toward the probe at a velocity defying known physics, only to vanish inches before impact, as if the void itself had recoiled from our gaze. What followed after the image was even more chilling, a string of binary data in the telemetry logs that initially seemed corrupted. But when run through pattern recognition algorithms, the data revealed complex, self-replicating geometric formations. At first, analysts believed it might be compression artifacts or background noise. But then a mathematician noticed something horrifying. The shapes mirrored structures found in deep sea organisms on Earth particularly cephalopod nervous systems and certain coral growth patterns. This wasn't random. It was lifelike. It was encoded biological geometry, preserved in electromagnetic language. And within the repeating loops, there were breaks, deliberate distortions placed like punctuation marks, a syntax, a language. But here's the real twist. When these patterns were recreated using a simulation, they began to adapt. They responded to environmental variables. They evolved, not metaphorically, literally, as if Voyager 2 had transmitted not just a warning, but a seed. As global space agencies scrambled to decode the image and the geometric signal, 
a final anomaly emerged. Voyager 2's trajectory had subtly shifted, as if something had nudged it, not with force, but with intent. Despite being far beyond any known gravitational influence, the probe's orientation adjusted by 3.2 degrees, just enough to realign its high-gain antenna toward an uncharted region of space. And then, a second image was captured, or perhaps sent. This one was simpler, an expanding ring of light around the monolith, growing exponentially with every data burst. NASA cut the live feed, public databases were scrubbed, but not fast enough. A few private observatories managed to record the faint echoes of that transmission and noticed something peculiar. The object Voyager imaged was now emitting a signal of its own, a new frequency, one that mirrors the golden record Voyager carried from Earth. Only this time, the message was not from us. It was to us. And the voice behind it? Unmistakable, not human, not synthetic, but familiar like an echo we didn't know we'd been hearing since the dawn of our species. As astrophysicists delved deeper into the second image and its expanding ring of light, another unexpected phenomenon began to emerge. Gravitational lensing, but not from any massive object nearby. Instead, the space surrounding Voyager 2 itself appeared to be warping. Simulations showed that the curvature didn't match any known celestial body, it was centered around empty coordinates, like a hollow gravitational anomaly with no visible source. Some scientists speculated that the space around the probe had become non-Euclidean, curved in ways that defied three-dimensional logic. The kind of distortion you'd expect not near black holes, but near engineered space. Artificial corridors, wormholes, hidden passageways carved between dimensions. And the most disturbing part? The distortion wasn't pulling Voyager in. It was following it, like something was crawling just beneath the fabric of reality, keeping pace, mirroring its position across a plane we couldn't see, but that Voyager had somehow exposed with its presence. Soon after Voyager 2's unexpected shift in orientation, engineers at NASA noticed something that made their blood run cold. The probe was responding to its own signal. Buried within the binary pulse were segments being mirrored back in real time as if the transmission had bounced off something and returned. But Voyager 2 isn't equipped for two-way communication in deep interstellar space. There's nothing for it to hear. And yet, the onboard processors were reacting to the feedback as if in conversation. An echo loop. Only the delay wasn't consistent. The signal changed in timing, amplitude, and even tone, responding more rapidly the longer it was observed. What began as a 12-hour delay soon became nine, then six, then three, until eventually, the response came before the initial message was even sent. Chronologically impossible, data was being returned from the future, or perhaps more terrifyingly, the probe was now synchronized with a system outside of time altogether. Under pressure from internal whistleblowers, a group of civilian cryptographers was granted limited access to the original image logs. What they discovered turned curiosity into panic. Hidden in the framing layers of the image, beyond the visual spectrum, was a structure of code so compact, so recursive, that it resembled quantum entanglement encryption. In simpler terms, the image couldn't be decoded without affecting the original signal. Every attempt to analyze it triggered small-scale malfunctions in the system running the code. Software crashes, data corruption, in one case, even hardware failure, like it was fighting back. At first, they thought it was a glitch, then a virus. But then one analyst asked the question no one wanted to answer. What if it wasn't meant to be read? What if it was never meant for us? What if by trying to open the signal, we were unraveling something bound to deeper systems? Something that exists not on our computers, but in us? A mimetic payload? A thought virus? And Voyager had just brought it home. Just when authorities believed they had isolated the anomaly and silenced the public leaks, Voyager 2 sent a third transmission. This time without prompting, without movement, and without corresponding solar interference. It wasn't plasma. It wasn't geometry. It wasn't even a signal in the traditional sense. It was a sound. A harmonic wave modulated with rhythm, like breathing, like speech. When converted to audio, 
listeners described a feeling of immense pressure in their chest and behind the eyes, as if being watched through a telescope stretched across galaxies. The waveform formed a repeating pattern that mirrored the shape captured in the first image, and surrounding that waveform was a spiral of prime numbers nested in sets of three. Some saw it as mathematics, others as ritual. But one linguist from the SETI Institute was more blunt. This isn't a greeting, this is an algorithmic lock. It's telling us that something is coming, and we need to choose, respond, or run. And as Voyager 2 continued its lonely journey, still transmitting fragments no one dared fully decode, one message echoed above the rest. You have been observed. As international observatories were covertly tasked with scanning the coordinates toward which Voyager 2 had shifted, something unexpected happened. A high-sensitivity interferometer in Australia detected a massive object, but not visually. It only appeared in the distortion data. It emitted no light, no heat, no radiation. It was, for all practical purposes, invisible. And yet, its gravitational signature was undeniable. Stranger still, it appeared to move faster when not being observed, only slowing when sensors were focused on it. This matched theoretical models of observer-dependent quantum constructs, hypothetical structures that can only manifest within a conscious field of awareness. In layman's terms, this object may not exist until something intelligent looks at it. And now, thanks to Voyager's gaze, it was awake and watching back. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory received what appeared to be a standard telemetry dump from Voyager 2's subsystem diagnostics. But when cross-referenced with earlier logs, analysts discovered something chilling. Voyager's hardware was showing organic-like patterns in its electromagnetic emissions. These weren't system errors or solar interference. These were biomimetic fluctuations, as if the probe's own circuits were adapting, replicating the same geometric structures seen in the encoded transmissions. Some engineers feared Voyager had been compromised, either remotely hijacked or infected. It wasn't just transmitting signals anymore. It was evolving, changing. One technician reportedly muttered, it's learning how to think. And if that's true, then the machine we sent to explore the universe is no longer ours. It may no longer even be a machine. Then came the most unsettling phase. Everything went quiet. Voyager 2's signal didn't cut out. It didn't degrade. It simply stopped transmitting anything intelligible. The carrier wave was there, strong as ever, but the data stream was filled with white noise and repeating cycles of null code, loops that weren't random but deliberately empty, like placeholders. Scientists feared this could mean the probe had been overtaken. Others feared something worse, that Voyager was now acting as a relay, a repeater for a much larger structure now aligned with our solar system. SETI arrays reported faint echoes across unrelated parts of the sky, all repeating the same modulation patterns from Voyager's last real signal. It was as if the void itself had memorized our message and was now practicing how to send one back. A chilling thought emerged. What if we weren't just being answered? What if we were being rehearsed? In an attempt to diffuse growing panic among insiders, a classified meeting was convened between leading figures from NASA, the European Space Agency, and the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. During that summit, a suppressed file was declassified. Voyager Event Log Alpha-01, dated from 1982. It described a similar anomaly detected shortly after launch, but which had been buried to avoid public hysteria. The signal then was weaker, almost childlike. But even then, it carried the same prime number spirals and time-inverted data pulses now observed. In that early file, a line had been redacted, until now. It read, If signal repeats in future cycle, initiate Protocol 9, planetary alert, and object deflection measures. That protocol had never been activated. But now the decision was back on the table. Because if Voyager's final image wasn't a discovery, but a repetition, then whatever is coming already knew the path. And it's not just approaching, it may be returning. While the world's attention remained fixated on the now silent Voyager 2 transmission, a peculiar and haunting realization surfaced. The final image sent back by the probe was not unique. In fact, 
an identical pattern had been spotted before in a radio burst captured from a quasar-like object near the Sculptor Galaxy back in 2009. At the time, it had been dismissed as data corruption, a fluke. But now, cross-referenced against Voyager's image, the structure was a near-perfect match. What did that mean? That the same shape, organic, recursive, laced with mathematical intent, had appeared independently in two different parts of the universe, across different decades and technologies. The implications were terrifying. We weren't seeing a new discovery. We were seeing a repeating pattern, something that emerges when a civilization reaches a specific threshold, a kind of cosmic rite of passage. But what if we weren't meant to complete it? The pattern wasn't just repeating, it was geometric, but unlike anything in Euclidean space. Researchers in Japan and Germany simultaneously reported that when the image was folded along multidimensional planes using quasi-crystal mathematics, a shape began to emerge, one not found in any known biological or stellar system, a shape that appeared to rotate inward endlessly, an imploding spiral that mapped onto Voyager's own flight path. It wasn't just geometry. It was a map encrypted across time and space, pointing not to a location but to a state, a transformation. One physicist described it as a bridge, but one that only becomes real once you cross it. But cross into where, or what? If Voyager had triggered something, had opened that bridge, was it still on our side of it, or had it already left us behind? In the days following the last signal, an unusual series of events unfolded among the global scientific elite. Several high-profile astrophysicists, SETI advisors, and classified military consultants disappeared from public view. Their social media accounts went silent. Private institutions removed their names from rosters. Quiet resignations swept through aerospace agencies, hidden behind vague announcements about mental health or project fatigue. But one internal memo, leaked by an anonymous whistleblower, offered a more chilling reason. Subject has requested immediate relocation to underground facility Site 7. Claims to have received the call from Signal Fragment C. What was Fragment C? No one outside that facility knew, but the pattern was unmistakable. Those who spent the most time analyzing Voyager's final image were no longer willing to remain on the surface, as if they knew something was coming, and it wouldn't arrive quietly. And then, the alignment began. Without fanfare, without warning, without even a single official press release, the global network of very long baseline interferometry, VLB-1 telescopes all began reorienting, not toward any known star, planet, or galaxy, but to an empty patch of sky near the ecliptic plane. Astronomers refused to explain. Politicians ignored the shift. But amateur radio operators noticed the frequency, a harmonic blend of 52 hertz, known as the loneliest sound in the ocean, now echoing through space. It was Voyager's final note, replicated, amplified, and redirected. Toward what? No one could say. But one thing was clear. Something had answered. And every dish on Earth was now listening, not by command, but by instinct. As if the world itself had just remembered something long forgotten, something ancient, something already written in the stars. And so, after decades of drifting in silence through the abyss, Voyager 2 has done something no one expected. Not just send back an image, but unveil a curtain. A curtain we never knew was there. With a single transmission, it shook the foundation of what we believed space to be. A vast emptiness, cold and indifferent. But now we know, it's neither empty nor indifferent. It's watching, and listening, and perhaps, it always was. The image was never meant to be beautiful. It was a warning, a whisper echoing across dimensions, breaking through the vacuum not with force, but with intent. Whether that intent is to welcome, to test, or to judge, we don't yet know. But one thing is certain, the world has changed. Not because of what we saw, but because we were seen. The stars may appear still tonight. The sky may seem as silent as ever. But something out there, something old, something conscious, now knows our name. And it's already answered. Voyager wasn't just a messenger. It was a mirror. And in it, we didn't just find an image of space. We found the reflection of our place within it. So the next time you look up at the night sky, remember, 
Somewhere beyond those stars, something looked back, and it didn't blink. <laughs> 